Uh, David, I, w I wanted to ask you, you know, there's, <clears throat> there's this um, disconnect between, and I sort of notice it here, this is my first time here, there's a lot of emphasis on technology, and you spoke quite eloquently about the importance of social emotional development, which is not about technology at all. It's about human inter in interactions. And you know, the brains, when they develop, expect those interactions, the sort of serve and return uh, emphasis that we as developmental neurobiologists talk about. So how do you think about this dichotomy, this growing dichotomy, or maybe growing gap between what we're surrounded by in terms of technology advancements that's, that's pushing down maybe even prenatally, and what's that, what that's doing in terms of creating a, a substrate in which sound social emotional development is more and more d difficult to attain because of those technologies. Do you mean the ability to uh, keep attention span? And the ability to interact, the time or the, well, let's say the motivation to even interact because where is the motivation to interact when we have technologies that can tap into our nucleus accumbens or amygdala and, and we're completely satisfied. I mean, we learn motivations, right. we learn to be attracted to certain things. We're not born with, with that. And the more technologies there are, the greater the gap there's going to be or the greater the, the, uh, the difficulties in motivating people to actually interact. And, and for, for infants and, and toddlers, that's a particularly critical problem. Right. Well, I, I, first of all, what you say, obviously you know, know more about this than I, but one of the fascinating theories I heard recently, first, one of the things we know is that babies, as soon as they're born, they pick up their mother's face and they just want to look at it. And they, they, you get this dialogue. One of the interesting theories, and this is only a theory, is that humans are the only man, mammals that pause when they suckle on their mother's breasts. And the theory was this induces the mother to jiggle every 20 seconds or so. And that jiggle, pause, jiggle, pause, jiggle, pause is the beginning of a dialogue between mother and infant. And it's that dialogue nature that is actually how people volley back and forth and develop relationships. And when I talked about the permeability of mind, it is that ability to dialogue back and forth. And we all know people who are tremendously smart but have no dialogue ability. And uh, we don't even have wor words for these. Now, is technology hampering that? And I guess. My first reaction is, so far I don't see evidence of it. If you look at young people, or I'm sure all of you have Facebook pages, in some way it's intensely social. And I don't, my, one of my kids is here, so I'm not gonna talk too much about this, but some of the others, my other kids, I won't talk about the one who's here, uh, uh, they're with their friends all day at school and they come home and they start texting each other. What's left to say? They've been together all, I don't know, but, but the constant need to text. Uh, and the technology that we've had it, it, there's a lot of gaming, but most technology has evolved in a social direction. And I guess my instinct is, A, I haven't seen any negative consequences of an asocial group of high-tech people, and B, I'd say the intensely social nature of human beings transforms whatever technology it touches and turns it social. And that's, that's my positive thing so far. I could be completely wrong.